The Pine Barrens of southern New Jersey, also known as the Pinelands or simply the Pines, is the largest remaining example of the Atlantic Coastal Pine Barrens ecosystem. Sandy, acidic, and with an abundance of nutrient-poor soil, the area is largely uninhabited, despite its proximity to the metropolitan masses of Philadelphia and New York City. Some rural communities, however, do exist within and on the fringes of the Pine Barrens. Favoured by European settlers for its ease of access to lumber and other natural resources, the area has supported a population for centuries, with ancestors of the native Lenape people said to have lived there 10,000 years ago. And yet, it was an event, innocuous in character, in 1735, which can be argued to have truly defined the Pine Barrens, giving the area a dark and enigmatic reputation that lasts to this day. And whilst on the subject of dark and enigmatic reputations, I'd like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is the world's biggest, best, and most hair-raising mobile game, and one of the ways it's earned its reputation is through its host of terrifying, near-unbeatable bosses. Whenever there's a villain, there's a hero, and amongst Raid's 13 playable factions, there are some who fit the bill better than most. The High Elves are the oldest race in the Telerian League, and in many ways are the classic good guys. Beautiful, powerful in old magic, and led by a nearly immortal ruler. And yet, the High Elves' current allegiance may not be all that it seems. To find out more, you'll have to play the campaign. For now, here are some of my favourite High Elven champions. As always, Raid's artwork and attention to detail is brilliant. Another thing I love about Raid is how they are consistently adding new content. Raid recently released its biggest ever update, their fantastically reviewed Doom Tower, 120 floors of secret challenge rooms and horrifying bosses. This month, they have lots of great tournaments planned, as well as many new champions. There's never been a better time to get started. And so, support my channel by downloading Raid and giving it a try. All you have to do is click Click the link in the description and get your free Spirit Champion, 50,000 silver, and more. You'll also find extra rewards in your inbox for the next 30 days only. And so, without further ado, let us get on with the video and take a look at a terrifying monster claimed to exist in the real world, the Jersey Devil. The story is said to start with Deborah Leeds, an 18th century resident of the eponymous southern New Jersey town, Leeds Point. According to the will written by her husband Jaffet in 1736, the Leeds family had 12 children, a large number even for the time. Mother Leeds, it is said, had no desire for a 13th pregnancy. And yet, so says the popular legend, that is what happened, with a 13th Leeds child being born in 1735. During her pregnancy, Mother Leeds supposedly cursed the child. Frustrated, she cried out, let this one be the devil. And that, according to legend, is precisely what happened. Although the baby boy was born normal, it is said that he soon transformed after birth, growing wings, hooves, and a forked tail. Devilish, the creature resembled both a bat and a goat. After lashing those who had gathered at its mother's bedside with its tail, it screamed, then flew up the chimney and away into the night. The infernal creature, it is said, headed into the Pine Barrens. And so, the Leeds family lost their thirteenth child. In the centuries since this alleged happening, the story has ebbed and flowed, with Mother Leeds being called Jane in some versions of the legend, and local clergymen being sent to exorcise the creature from the Pine Barrens in others. What is known, however, is that a family with twelve children headed by Jaffet and Deborah Leeds did live in Leeds Point, at the time the strange incident is said to have occurred. We also know that far from disappearing into obscurity, the happening became firmly embedded into the culture of the local area, so much so that by the early 20th century, many genuinely feared encountering the monstrous thirteenth child of Mother Leeds. In the century previous, the Leeds Devil, as the monster was known, had begun to expand out from oral tradition and into written record. Several newspapers, including the Atlantic Monthly in 1859 and the Elkhart Sentinel in 1887, reported on sightings claimed by Pine Barren residents, describing the creature as a thing with an unearthly yell that was neither bird nor an animal. It was also believed to be unstoppable, with not even the best marksmen able to kill it. For all of the reported sightings, however, the Leeds Devil was largely dismissed by the wider area as a silly folktale told by Pine Rats, a derogatory term used to refer to residents of the Pine Barrens. Then, in 1909, 
everything changed. In the course of a week, from the 16th to the 23rd of January, hundreds of sightings were alleged and reported on by multiple newspapers. From all over the state came all manner of claims. Strange hoof prints in the snow, pets mysteriously found dead, poultry farmers discovering their chickens slaughtered en masse, and even a devilish creature spotted flying over homes and towns. One particular encounter came from Haddon Heights, and alleged that a tram had been attacked by the beast, with it being successfully chased off by bullets. In the immediate aftermath of the incident, trams in several other towns began to maintain armed guards. According to multiple eyewitnesses, the creature was monstrous. It had four legs, but could walk on two, was winged, possessed a long tail, had a head like that of a horse, and eyes that blazed. By Friday, the 22nd of January, fear of the beast was so strong that schools and businesses across the area were closed. Vigilante groups and hunters roamed the pines, armed and determined to end the creature's reign of terror. And yet, according to an article published in the Inquirer, hounds put on the trail refused to follow the tracks, and with bristling hair and the picture of terror, ran home. The entire state was bordering on panic. It is even rumoured that the Philadelphia Zoo offered a $10,000 reward for the capture of the creature. And so the legend of the Jersey Devil was truly born, cementing the name into written record, and providing the imagery that is to this day so strongly associated with the mythology. But were the sightings of the creature real, or just the result of mass hysteria? Whilst alleged encounters with the Jersey Devil did die down after the week of mayhem, with some even claiming to have captured the beast by presenting cleverly disguised kangaroos, hoaxes that were no doubt motivated by the cash reward, the reports of the creature by no means disappeared altogether. The Jersey Devil, it is said, even crossed state lines. On the 27th of July, 1937, a hastily formed posse of two dozen farmers skipped their sleep to scour the hills and fields around Downington, Pennsylvania, for a bounding critter with huge eyes. The strange monster, so the Pennsylvanian Bulletin reported, was first spotted at 9pm after it leaped across the road and startled local residents, Sidney Ladley and his wife, who were driving on a back road near their home. Back in New Jersey in 1950, a driver is said to have reported being chased along the Pine Barrens Lower Bank Road by a two-legged creature. Terrifyingly, it kept pace with his vehicle at around 50 miles per hour. The following year, in 1951, a group of boys in Gibbstown sparked fear when they claimed to have encountered a monster matching the Jersey Devil's description whilst out in the woods. In 1960, tracks were supposedly found, along with loud shrieks being heard, near May's Landing, and another cash reward was offered, this time by merchants in Camden, who hoped to build a zoo especially to showcase the creature if it was captured. Later, in 1993, forest ranger John Irwin was driving along the Mullica River in the Pine Barrens, when he saw a strange creature blocking the road ahead of him. Irwin described it as standing about six feet tall, with horns and matted black fur. After staring at each other for several minutes, the creature is said to have turned and ran into the forest. Despite skeptics of the creature's existence consistently claiming that the legend had run its course and would soon be heard of no more, encounters continued to be reported. Not merely was the Jersey Devil sighted throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, but into the 21st also. In 2001, a young woman called Danielle reported seeing a seven feet tall greyish brown creature that looked somewhat like a horse and a dog outside her bedroom window in Burlington. Its wings, she claimed, were scraping the window, and when it left, there were scrapes like a bear had tried to get in. Despite reporting the incident to the local police department, her encounter was laughed at. A later case from 2003 describes how a family in Brown's Mills woke up and found their yard covered in mysterious hoof-like prints. It was an incident dating to October 2015 that can be said to mark the beginning of a new increase in sightings of the legendary beast. According to an article published by NJ.com, a man called Dave Black was driving home from his security guard job in Atlantic City when he witnessed something peculiar. 
when passing the golf course in Galloway on Route 9, an area that borders the Pine Barrens. Black claimed to have seen what he initially thought was a llama running in and out of the trees lining the road. Already struck by the absurdity of what he was witnessing, Black was blown away by what he saw next. It, he allegedly wrote in his email to the NJ.com journalist, spread out leathery wings and flew off over the golf course. Black stated that he was able to pull out his phone just in time to photograph the strange creature before it flew away. Despite Black claiming that the photograph was genuine and was not photoshopped or a staged thing, many have been understandably unimpressed by the image. And here is where things start getting messy. Just like the Jersey Devil mania of 1909, which saw all manner of hoaxes presented as the beast, what could be a genuine unknown creature has been buried underneath obvious deceptions, or at the very best, dubious so-called encounters. After Black's doubtful image was shared, another came forward claiming to have seen the very same creature on Old Port Republic Road near Leeds Point. The alleged eyewitness, Emily Martin, even sent a video of what she had supposedly seen to the same journalist who had handled Black's story, and was subsequently ridiculed all across the world. Whilst it may not have shown the real Jersey Devil, Martin's video did evidence the persistent interest in the legendary creature. The story was not only a good piece for local news, but also popular with readers of major news outlets including Buzzfeed, Huffington Post, The Guardian, and Good Morning America. It could be argued that the recurring nature of the Jersey Devil is what makes it so fascinating. And it is not just because the legend is entertaining, there are many people who genuinely believe there is something to the story and that the Pine Barrens might just be home to a peculiar creature. If not a supernatural monster, then some sort of unlikely remnant of a prehistoric era, or an as-of-yet identified new species of animal. One such person is Jeff Heimbuck, who, for four and a half years, worked with the Devil Hunters to help record, catalogue and investigate sightings of the Jersey Devil in and around the Pine Barrens. The now disbanded, research-oriented group was founded in 1999, and when Heimbuck joined had close to three or four thousand reports of Jersey Devil encounters. For members, the work was serious, with a map being kept of the sightings, as well as details about how promising an encounter was thought to be being catalogued. Although the Devil Hunters website was shut down several years ago, archives can still be accessed via the Wayback Machine, and the listed sightings are by no means few. Arranged by year, the self-styled official researchers of the Jersey Devil published many long-form testimonies from eyewitnesses. One such testimony, dating to the 5th of September 2006, detailed how a man called Robert witnessed a creature that looked like a winged horse fly over his driveway and into the woods near his house in Hamburg, New Jersey. According to his account, he had been sleeping in the attic of his house when he heard what sounded like a squirrel scraping on the top of his roof. By tapping on the ceiling, he disturbed the creature. When he rushed to the window to see the now moving beast, he was shocked by what he saw. Not only was the creature winged, it also had bright red eyes and growled as it flew away. Another of the more recent alleged Jersey Devil encounters comes from Tom's River, a township on the edge of the Pine Barrens. On the night of the 30th of April 2008, the eyewitness's dog began barking violently. The owner let the animal outside, into a backyard consisting of woods, not thinking anything much about the incident. Then, later, at around 3am, they claimed that they were woken by their dog, desperately scratching at their sliding door, trying to get inside. As they let the dog back in, they claimed to have heard incredibly loud screeches and scuffling in the woods. Intrigued by the noise, they describe how they walked to their property border to investigate. There, they supposedly saw a monstrous creature, about six feet tall and two feet wide. The beast is described as having shrieked and ran away faster than any animal can possibly move. The next morning, in the light of day, the eyewitness returned to the woods, still shocked and confused by what they had seen. They stated that they hoped to find prints of the strange creature. What they found instead was terrible. Their neighbor's dog had been slaughtered, seemingly by the monstrous creature. 
These two testimonies represent a much larger pool of sightings. For the Devil Hunters at least, the Jersey Devil was worthy of objective investigation. In the centuries since the original Mother Leeds legend, no one has been able to wholly explain the Jersey Devil. The most skeptical dismiss the story as just that, a story which, over the centuries, has spiked in and out of popular consciousness, driven by hysteria and comical bandwagoning. Others point to a political origin, arguing that the devilish creature had nothing to do with Deborah and Japhet Leeds, and was instead an invention meant to defame Daniel Leeds, a Quaker and prominent person of pre-revolution colonial southern New Jersey, who upset many, including Benjamin Franklin, for publishing astrological almanacs that were described as pagan and therefore blasphemous. The Leeds monster, it has been said, was a way to make a monster of Daniel Leeds and his family. And then there are those who live in hope, hope that there is more to the world than first meets the eye, and that the Jersey Devil, like Bigfoot, Chupacabra, and many other cryptozoological beings with rich histories and folklore may very well be real. Amongst those who are willing to entertain the possibility that the Jersey Devil may be a hitherto unknown species of animal, it is generally classified as a living pterodactyl, perhaps a genus similar to the Diamorphodon, a medium-sized pterosaur from the early Jurassic period. For those on the fence, a trip to the Pine Barrens may just be the only way to satisfy personal curiosity. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more of the paranormal, ensuring you have clicked the bell icon to receive notifications of new videos. And if you cannot wait until my next video, why not check out the one suggested on screen now. Until next time.